Hey there, this is a special and very quick video for the clients um, up north whose uh, kilt I've just finished altering. <clears throat> now, we had to let it out a little bit, but fortunately we were able to do that just by letting the aprons out a tiny bit. And I had to press these about three or four times to um, press out the old creases, because I get the feeling this, this kilt is is not new and it's uh, it's well loved and a couple of those creases there's still a tiny bit of a ghost of a crease right there but it's unless i draw your attention to it it's not terrifically hard or difficult or hard to see i should say um now you'll notice on your apron that the uh the, the deep section on the on the outside of the outer apron is unusually deep and that's because i was determined you know first do no harm right i was determined not to remove any cloth from this thing so it's um i'm, I'm simply not going to cut cloth off because i have to think of the next alteration right so so it's a bit deeper than one might ordinarily expect but there it is the buckle tabs i i re them because this person had did this sort of very clever kind of origami thing where they can fold it up one-handed and then sew it on the kilt and I don't have that talent and I like one that's got sort of an integrity by itself so the two buckle tabs I'd, I'd sort of restored and sewed before sewing on now your we discussed the uh, third buckle and strap which I consider to be vestigial I consider to be really pointless in 99% of the cases so I'll be returning that to you um the i was a i was a bit dissatisfied with these the, the stock straps on these things on your kilt aren't particularly long they're, they're quite short and that uns, sort of made me unsettled a bit because sending the kilt through the post doing my best but still not being there when you tried the thing on um i just didn't like that it's not long enough. So what I did was I went through my spare parts box, as it were, and I found another strap that almost looks like it's made. It's it's a different leather, but the cutting is the same and the spacing is the same. It's just longer. And I think it might have been made possibly by the same shop. But that gives you more latitude on the inside apron and, and decreases the risk of the thing not fitting you after all of this. Um, green uh, flannel inside lining. I redid some work inside in addition to the um, uh, canvas, but there was also several moth holes. Now, the fact that I have to feel for one of them, I repaired them with, with silk thread. There it is. Okay, there's a moth hole that I did an overcast stitch around the edge to, to stabilize the edge and then sewed it through and through with, with silk thread. So it's... Um, it's a little bit hard to see. You can feel it when you rub your hand on it. But it's, it's, it's not an invisible repair, but it's a neat repair. I've done the same thing here. It's a little more visible because it's in the in this area, the cloth. And I've just run silk back and forth to stabilize it. I wasn't able to do the two, three nips, moth nips on the red, four moth nips on the red, because I couldn't find... The right color of red silk thread to use i i had one color i did one of them and it looked worse than before because it, it the, the color was lighter and it stood out remarkably so i took it out again um if i can find if i ever manage to find variations in color in silk thread then i'll then i'll do it but in the meantime it's just like you know first don't make it look worse so so there we are so i'm going to wrap all this up for you including the, the two spare two spare straps, one spare buckle, your kilt pin, which is right over there. But I'll roll this up for you right now and get it into the post to you tomorrow. So thank you, and thank you for choosing me to be your kilt alterer.